Hey guys, what is going on? It is a cool December Sunday day, but it is beautiful and flat out and we are going to try to catch some lobsters. The water is 75 degrees, which if you guys know us, Floridians, that's pretty cold for us. We're gonna try to see if we can catch some lobsters. Victor just went down to the first rock and found six, so I'm about to hop in. Let's see if we can catch them. There's probably six or seven off the uh, next rock right here. They all look legal. Wow. So you should anchor right here. Okay. guys so we are now at spot number two fingers crossed that there are some bigger lobsters at this spot because we only found one keeper at the last one what do you think why aren't you getting in because it's uh december 6th and uh i like diving in uh july and august too cold for you yeah i don't need to man i, I got the crew to get it done for me i could just come for the ride and enjoy watching my favorite sport take place you don't have any more New Jersey blend. <laughs> no, that's all gone a long time ago. are back home with our one lobster that we caught. We went to our second spot and Victor found a br bunch of broken off antennas, which means that other people have already been to that spot, cleaned out the lobsters. These are the lobster antennas. And a lot of times when you catch the lobsters, 
legs drop off or antennas drop off. And if we're at the spot, kind of recently between the time and when those last divers were there, maybe the fish haven't found the legs yet or the antennas and haven't ate them. So that's how you know people were just here, already caught the lobsters, didn't find any more. And also it was a little bit cold. I know you guys are gonna make fun of me for that, but you know, I grew up in Florida my whole life and we're used to diving in water that's like way over 80 degrees, nice and toasty when it's like 90 degrees during the summer outside. And it's, you know, a little bit cool outside, so don't hate on me for not liking 75 degree water. So since we only caught one lobster and I don't have a lot of footage for you guys, might as well talk to you a little bit about the lobster. And then also tell you guys about the nets that we use to catch the lobsters. So we'll start with that. Now, this is the nets we always use. You guys see them in all the videos. And I, we've used them for about 12 years now. And my neighbor made them, gave us some to use. And a lot of you guys actually reached out to me about the nets. So now I am making them and I'm selling them on a website called floridalobsternets.com. So I am hand making them. They work absolutely amazing. We don't use anything else besides these nets. We use a tickle stick to usually tickle the lobsters out. You can usually tap them on the tail and it'll chase them out from under the rock. Once you get them outside of the rock, you take your net that they basically can't see because it's clear, and he's gonna be facing away from you like this. You always wanna to be towards the set, his head, so he can be watching what you're doing. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your net, just like this. You're gonna hold it here, hold it here, however you want. Now you're gonna put it behind his tail, just like this. And you wanna do this slow. Lobsters are very, very smart. If you've ever caught them before, you know how hard they are to catch when they're outside the rock because they can go any way. What they do is they use this tail to propel themselves and that's how they swim. So lobsters swim backwards. They go like this with their tail and they shoot away from you and swim backwards. If they're walking, they can walk all over the place too, but they can even shoot sideways. Like sometimes you go to net them and they shoot sideways. Like they're pretty cool um, creatures. So you use your tickle stick, which I probably should have to be showing you what I'm doing. Today we were actually using a pole spear because we forgot our tickle stick. So even though you're using the pole spear, you're not spearing the lobster, you're just using it as a tool to chase him out from the rock. So nice and easy, nice and slow, get this behind his tail. And as soon as you get it touching the sand, you go like this. You put it down on top of him and now he's trapped. He can't go anywhere. A lot of times they'll try swimming out of this. So that's why you need to make sure you have it pushed all the way down into the sand because he's gonna try to propel backwards with his tail and get out from under the net. So that's why if you do this first, sometimes he'll start propelling already, but you already have it behind his tail blocking him from going that way. Put it down on top of him. Then you take your other hand, grab him just like this, and now he's yours. So once you got him here, the whole point of the shallow net is so that you can easily just take him right out of the net, just like that. With the deep nets, a lot of people think they prefer the deep nets because they don't have to worry about grabbing the lobster in there, but you're going lobstering. Grab a pair of gloves, touch your lobster, it's not gonna kill you. And now what you're gonna do is you always wanna measure your lobsters unless, of course, it's giant like this, then you don't really have to worry about it, but get yourself a nice legal measuring device. Your lobster net comes with a handle with a little attachment at the back end so you can put on your own lobster gauge. The, the net doesn't come with it. You gotta do this on your own. So this is how you measure the lobster. You take your gauge and you put it between his eyes, right here. See, there's his eyes, these are his horns. And you're gonna put it right there on that little notch between his horns. There's the front of your gauge, here's the back of your gauge. This is the head, it's called the carapace. This is a legal lobster by a good three quarters of an inch. So from this point to here, three quarters of an inch, almost to an inch bigger than it needs to be. If this lobster was a small lobster, then this gauge would fall to the back of the carapace, and that's how you would know that it's too small. So the first two lobsters that I caught today were like this, too small. So behind the head, just like that, legal lobster. If it would have fallen back here, past the carapace, too small. Even if it's exactly three inches, lobsters need to be greater than three inches. So even if it's touching there, that's not a legal lobster. Let him go, let him grow. He's not legal if he's exactly three inches, they need to be greater than three inches. So like I said, we've been using these nets for about 12 years. Best thing, hands down, we've ever used. If you guys are interested, I will have a link in the description, as well as you can find them at floridalobsternets.com. I have them in stock, I'll ship them out to you right away. So there's that absolutely amazing product handmade by me. Okay, so there's your net. Time to clean your lobster. 
You can eat the legs. There's meat in the legs. There's meat in these knuckles here. If you wanted to cook this thing whole, cut it down the stomach. I have a lot of videos where I've done that in the past. I have videos where I've cooked the legs in the past. Tonight's recipe that I'm gonna do, I'm going to be just cooking the tail meat. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Take one hand, make sure you're wearing gloves, grab the head just like this. Now with your other hand, you're gonna grab the tail. I prefer to put the tail like this, but you don't have to. So take your one hand here, one hand here, and you're gonna twist in opposite directions. Just like this, and the tail comes right off. So as you can see, there's head meat in there. You can boil it, cook it whole, turn this into lobster bisque. Use this for a, a seafood stock, lobster stock. Now to clean out the digestive tract and the tail, what you're gonna do is break off part of your antenna. Just like this. It doesn't need to be giant, just a small little piece. And this is the anal opening of the lobster. Take your antenna and you're gonna shove it in there and it's gonna pull the digestive tract right out. Just like that. And this is the part that you wanna get rid of. That's his digestive tract. Ready for the grill, ready for you to cook it however you want your favorite lobster recipe. All right, so I will meet you guys in the kitchen. Tonight we are making lobster stuffed shells, so I will see you there. All right guys, before I hop in the shower and rinse all the salt water out of my hair, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do the final prepping for the lobsters for the way that I'm cooking them tonight. So I actually took out um, five more lobsters out of the freezer, took them out of the shell and chopped them into small little pieces. And we find lobsters something that freezes really, really well. If you guys have seen my videos before, when we catch a bunch and we don't eat them all, we always freeze them. Even if we're gonna eat them the next day, we always freeze them. They freeze so well. That was five, this would be number six. I'm gonna take my Dexter chef's knife here and I'm going to make a cut down the middle of the lobster, just like this. Turn them around, do the same thing. And this is kind of like hard shell here, so you just gotta kind of break through it. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn over your lobster, you're gonna take the palm of your hand, and you're gonna crack the shell of the lobster. Could you do this with scissors? Probably, but why when you have a palm? <laughs> Okay, so make sure you got your shell cracked. And now all you're gonna do is pull the meat right out of the shell. You can do this for a lot of different recipes. Makes it really easy. Something I've noticed with fresh lobster sometimes is the red of their skin gets on your hands. It looks like my hands are bloody, but it's literally not. It's from the skin. Um, I've noticed that only with fresh lobsters, which is weird. I don't notice it when the lobsters have been frozen, but fresh lobsters do that. Wash my hands real fast. Actually, wash off this too. Blood. So I just rinsed it off. I don't know why the skin does that red, weird red thing. And since we've ate so many lobsters, we've noticed that sometimes that skin can have a bad taste. And this is almost like a perfect example. You just saw me take this lobster out of the shell and have that weird orange red dye, whatever it is. And that skin is just weird. So instead of eating it, I'm gonna cut it off. It's kind of like skinning a fish you're just taking out the outside skin where, you know, sometimes you can eat the skin on fish. Sometimes you don't want to eat the skin on fish. And in this case, I don't want to eat this red dyed meat on this lobster. In some cases, you'll take the skin off and you'll see that it's probably about to shed and it's got this almost perfect skin underneath its shell. You can literally take a lobster with its skin left on and cook it next to a lobster that doesn't have the skin on and I guarantee you'll notice a difference in the taste. Some people might think I'm crazy, but that's what we like to do. Also, sometimes you don't even need to cut off the skin because it looks great, but this time I'm cutting it off. All right, so basically I'm just chopping this up into small little pieces so that it can go in the stuffed shell. Perfect example. 
Here's another lobster that I had just done. Look at this. This was the skin underneath the hard shell. So underneath this hard shell was this. It was probably about to shed and be a nice soft lobster, but he hadn't lost the hard shell yet. So this was underneath there. You, you're not gonna be able to eat this. So there we go. There is our nice bowl of nice cleaned up little chunks of lobster. I'm gonna throw that in the fridge, take a shower, and I will be right back. Okay, so like I said, I'm doing lobster stuffed shells. So basically you're doing your typical stuffed shell recipe and adding the lobster into it. I've done this one other time. I didn't film it, but I thought it was absolutely amazing and I was like, I need to show this in a video sometime because it was so good. So right now we have our shells boiling in this pot here. And then in this pan, we're going to get our lobster cooking. We're gonna just pre-cook our lobster. It does not take a really long time to cook. So here are our lobsters going in the pan. Hit them with some salt. as well as some black pepper. As you can see, your lobster is getting nice and white. And I'm going to add about five cloves of garlic. Time to make the filling. I just took the lobsters off the heat, so I'm going to take a nice big spoonful of ricotta cheese. That's probably close to like a cup, we'll say. Mozzarella cheese. We'll do about almost half of this. Parmesan cheese. Half? Probably about half of this too. Next is some chopped scallion we're adding in here. And then we have one egg as our binding, binding agent. And I'm gonna stir this up. I changed my mind, I'm adding all of this ricotta cheese. Now we're talking. Wait. Toast. And here's the lobster. Looks beautiful. Add this into your cheese mixture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I probably should have let my lobster cool down a little bit before adding it in here. It cooled down a little bit, but I probably should have let it cool down more, but kind of in a time crunch to get this baby in the oven. So, gotta do what you gotta do. So now, we're going to take our mussels <laughs> to open our jar of marinara. Now we're gonna add a little bit of a layer at the bottom of our pan first. Okay, so there's that. And now, time for the fun part. We're gonna take the shells and load these babies up with all that nice lobster, cheesy, scallion, garlic goodness. Just lay them top side up. All right, so I'm gonna fill these all up and then I'll see you when I'm done and we're gonna shove these in the oven. I have the oven preheating at 400 degrees. And once I finally fill these all up, we're gonna add our last sauce and cheese and then get them in the oven. So we finished stuffing all the shells. Now we're gonna come back in with some more sauce. Spread it around a little. Make sure everybody gets all the love. So now, coming in with more of our mozzarella cheese. Now obviously this is a very cheesy dish. So if you're someone who doesn't like cheese, this is not for you. Okay, and then just a little more Parmesan cheese on top as well. And here we go. 400 degrees. 
I get to be a little guest sous chef in Brooke's video tonight. So we had a bunch of iceberg lettuce and we decided to make a little wedge salad. So now I'm crumbling on some feta cheese. So to add to our Parmesan ricotta and mozzarella, we have feta. And as you guys can tell, we like cheese. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with it. Cheese is delicious. It's a very cheesy night. Now these are just diced Roma tomatoes. And then some scallion. Homemade ranch, which is actually really easy to make. Okay, so our shells have been in for 30 minutes and now they're coming out. How does that look? I can smell it, hear it, <laughs> visualize it. And then we finish off the wedge salad. That's why we laid down the, the ranch so it would stick to it somewhat. This is just some bacon that we cooked earlier. Let it cool off and then made into little bits. Homemade bacon bits. Homemade bacon bits. All right, shout out to Victor for doing the wedge salad. He just was in the mood to make a wedge salad and it looks absolutely beautiful. So here are our shells, which also look beautiful. I don't even know where to start. We'll see how this goes. The first one's always the hardest to get out. And I also made just little garlic bread. This plate tastes as good as it looks, but what's behind it? You know, we just decided to go for a little lobster dive today. I didn't go in the water because the water was cold. And we got one monster, but we, we luckily had some lobsters in the freezer. And I go diving with a crew that on the way in starts talking about, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna make a video. We only caught one lobster. And I'm like, bro, make it about the dinner. Make it about the dinner. Well, this dinner is definitely worthy of a video. It's it's a, an amazing way to eat Florida lobster. So tasty. And she caught that monster lobster with her custom nets. Perfect time just before Christmas to buy your favorite dive buddy one. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, good, good job on the, uh, on the dinner, bro. I agree with everything Brian just said. This, uh, these shells are delicious. They're way better than mine. <laughs> All salad, you have to do is add a little lobster to yours. <laughs> this uh, salad was killer. The bread's nice. Awesome. Thank you so much for inviting us. Okay. You're welcome. Wow, you're finished. <laughs> yeah, it was super good. And um, when it comes to Florida, Florida lobster, it's definitely critical that you keep finding new ways to eat it because it's super fun to catch, but I will say it's one of the harder things to cook that we do catch, and this was super good. So if you want to add it to your arsenal of things that you make lobster with, like it's it's definitely ranks pretty high on my list, and um, yeah, and the wedge salad was really good as well. Mm. I almost forgot about the wedge salad. Victor's on the boat. He's always thinking about food. So he's like, you know that salad that um, they make at your favorite restaurant? The uh, wedge salad with the cheese. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, I think I'm gonna make one tonight. I'll tell you, diving and fishing with these guys. And then this is my favorite restaurant to come to. It's mm -hmm. 
it's just, I don't know, there, there's no words. There, there really is no words. You know, how fortunate I am to fish and dive and then eat at this table. Thanks, Dad. I'm gonna make it real quick because Brooke hasn't eaten her food. I'm really happy that you made a video too because I, just like Brooke, we get in our ways where Brooke always wants to show you guys a good time and she was like, oh, I didn't have a lot of footage of lobster and this and that, but that's not what it's about. You know, we went out there, we made do with what we got. We got one lobster, but we had five in the freezer. And I think it's important to note, a lot of you guys comment on Brooke's videos and say, what do you guys do with all the lobster? This is it. This is five, six lobs that we took out of the freezer, plus the one we caught today, because it's not always a sleigh fest. And you know, winter's coming, so our days of being able to get out there are gonna be severely diminished. So, good job, Brooke. If you guys have never tried stuffed lobster shells, you have to give it a go, because it is it's a real crowd, crowd pleaser, it's really good. Hi guys, so you heard what everyone had to say about how good the stuffed shells were. And I made them one other time and I knew I had to make it in a video to show you guys. So delicious, really easy to make too. Honestly, you can follow the recipe on the back of the shell box and then just add the lobster to it. But again, if you guys are interested in the lobster nets, we've been using them for like 12 years. They are the top notch deal. <laughs> If you guys are interested, I will have a link in the description, as well as you can check out floridalobsternets.com. And I have them in stock, so as soon as you order, I'll have them out within a couple days so you guys can get them in time for Christmas if that's what you're trying to do. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.